Welcome to the latest edition of the High Pressure Podcast, an emergency high pressure podcast. My name is Jeff Beamish. I'm an air quality meteorologist at Sonoma Technology up in Petaluma, California. And joining me today, my colleague, Patrick Zahn. Hello, I am Patrick Zahn, the lead forecaster for Sonoma Technology. We forecast air quality for a few regions across the country, but today we are focusing on the situation on the West Coast because we have a serious smoke situation, which should be pretty obvious to anyone living here. Um, but right now we are just showing the visible satellite for the West Coast, and you can see smoke from fires in California and Oregon, and actually some up in Washington, uh, producing a ton of smoke. A lot of it has been transported offshore over the Eastern Pacific, but a lot of it is just blanketing uh, the Western part of California. So we're gonna be focusing a little bit on that smoke situation today, the fires that are causing that smoke, and the meteorology that's contributing to smoke accumulation and transport. So a lot of these fires we pointed out in our uh, previous podcast were ignited uh, during a lightning storm about three weeks ago now. And uh, some of the fires uh, weren't very large at that point, but they've grown and they, a lot of them were fueled by, by a high wind event that uh, occurred yesterday. We're gonna talk a little bit about that as well. But before I dive into that, I wanted to show some uh, f some webcams from the Alert Wildfire webpage. So this is a webcam in Sonoma County, but it's looking offshore. So this is actually looking out towards the ocean. And this is what a lot of people uh, woke up to see this morning uh, all throughout Sonoma County, Marin County, a lot of places throughout California was an orange sky, deep orange and dark skies through the morning hours. We noticed that the uh, the street lights were still on this morning at 9 a.m. because it was so dark. If we just shift to some other webcams, it's really remarkable just how orange and almost red it is here in some of these webcams. So uh, Jeff, did you want to talk a little bit about what's causing that, that color? Uh, yeah, and, and boy, you really hit on it. The fact that today has really felt like, uh, today being uh, September uh, 9th, that this is really the day that the sun has not come up here in California and across much of the West due to this very dense layer of smoke. And the reason that we're seeing this orange hue across the Bay Area is due to the smoke particles scattering the sunlight. Obviously, in, there's not a ton of sunlight that's really coming through this big smoke layer, but the scattering of that sunlight by the smoke particles is creating uh, the brown and the orange and the red that you're seeing just hovering over uh, places like Santa Rosa, Petaluma, on down to the uh, San Francisco Peninsula and over to Oakland as well. Almost, Patrick, you know, a Mars-like look out there uh, here this afternoon across Northern California due to the smoke. That's right. And I want to touch on where the fires are and talk a little bit about how big they are. But We'll come back to how this orange sky relates to the air quality directly at the surface. So now I'm going to use AirNow Tech Navigator just to give us an overview of the fire locations and sort of give us an indication of the fire sizes. So this is showing the hazard mapping system fire detections. So based on satellite detections of temperature, uh, this tool can show us where the fires are and sort of the area that each fire covers. And you can see not only are there numerous fires throughout California and Oregon, but some of them are quite large, it's over 100,000 acres. And uh, some of these fires have been going for several weeks and just continuing to grow. But right now I'm going to uh, remove the fires and focus on the PM 2.5 concentrations. I'm gonna go back one hour actually. So, we were looking at orange skies throughout the whole day and that caused a lot of alarm uh, around Sonoma County and Marin County throughout the region. Um, but it's worth mentioning that the, the smoke that was producing those orange skies um, was not entirely concentrated at the surface. So I'm showing uh, our one hour average PM concentrations here, PM 2.5. And a lot of them are in the 30s. We see a couple over 40, but the current concentrations here are in the high moderate AQI category, 
some of the uh, some of the locations are showing unhealthy for sensitive groups concentrations, but it's uh, it, it's high. But I would say it's not definitely not the highest concentrations that we've seen recently. So even though the the skies were a deep orange, that doesn't mean that the air quality at the surface is necessarily horrible. So that's why it's a good idea to check resources like um, Air Now or the Air Now Fire page and also Purple Air, which I'm going to show in a minute. Yeah, one thing I want to interject really quick here on Patrick is the fact that, you know, you woke up this morning, and I think you probably did the same thing that I did, which is check what the AQI was, and it was good. Uh, obviously, the skies were not very good. And the reason that a lot of the smoke was lofted, think about this if you're listening, you know, these are very large wildfires, as Patrick mentioned, over 100,000 acres, uh, producing a tremendous amount of smoke, and that smoke is causing these massive thermals of rising air that's just injecting this smoke so high up into the atmosphere. We're talking 30 to 40,000 feet up into the atmosphere. And so that's why we're seeing the orange skies, but we're not really smelling the smoke. Um, but as the day has gone along here, um, we have seen some of this smoke begin to mix down a little bit from the uh, upper levels of the atmosphere, make it down toward the surface. And that's why perhaps, uh, late this afternoon here in the Bay Area, you are smelling a little bit of that smoke versus this morning, some of that smoke this afternoon beginning to mix down to the surface. That's right. And that's a pattern that we've been seeing sometimes with a loft smoke, but concentrations being a little bit lower at the surface. And that can be uh, confusing, but that's why it is good to check uh, these air quality resources. So I'm going to actually shift gears a little bit and look at something that happened yesterday that was interesting. So I'm going to go back one day and so I'm loading the, the PM 2.5 concentrations and also the visible satellite showing the smoke. Um, you can see smoke from the August complex up in Glen and Tehama counties. Um, we've also got uh, smoke production from the North complex here, which is now over 150,000 acres. But you can see that it's on the um, sort of Eastern half of the Sacramento uh, Valley it's not looking like it's inundated with smoke. However, I want to show a different parameter here. I'm gonna show PM10. So it's a little bit difficult to see here. I'm also gonna put on the wind barbs. But the PM10 concentrations were in the hundreds. We're seeing 437, 495. That's micrograms per meter cubed. And that equates to an AQI level of, from a, uh, PM10 that is unhealthy and into the very unhealthy range, actually into the hazardous range in some sites. And the reason for that was not actually the smoke, it was these winds. So I'm not gonna get into the details of the wind barbs, but wind gusts were over 30, 40 miles an hour throughout the Northern Sacramento Valley, and that produced blowing dust. So they had a combination of blowing dust and smoke in the Sacramento area yesterday. And the maximum AQI levels for Sacramento were actually from these large particles, PM10. I didn't get into defining that exactly, but PM10 is larger particles, usually associated with blowing dust, not so much smoke. So smoke will usually cause high PM2.5 level, uh, levels. Those are finer particles. So that was just sort of an interesting anomaly. We don't see a lot of blowing dust events in the Sacramento area maybe a couple times a year, but this one was particularly interesting because we were trying to decipher what was causing the highest AQI levels at that time, and it wasn't in fact all of this smoke. Just for this particular afternoon, yesterday, it was PM10. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up too, Patrick, because there was some confusion with folks that were logging on to airnow.gov and checking out the interactive map and seeing these incredibly high AQI values. And yeah, you know, wildfires, there's a lot of them going on around California, no doubt about that. But because of these very strong winds picking up all that dust, uh, the highest AQI values being displayed yesterday were generally because of that dust, PM10 rather than smoke, PM2.5. That's right. So now I'm gonna switch back to PM2.5. I'm gonna go back to the current day, that's today. You can see, uh, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit I mean, this is really, really remarkable. Just blanketed in smoke along the whole western portion of northern and central California. Um, I especially want to point out how far this smoke goes offshore because that is going to factor in to our forecast 
really dense smoke. Now, it's not as clear whether this smoke offshore is at the surface or, it's, or if it's aloft. We don't have monitors out there. Um, there are some sophisticated satellite tools that can detect that, but they're not really available in real time. So we'll keep that in mind. Now, I wanna focus back in on the North Bay and the Sacramento area. So like I said, we're seeing a lot of high moderate concentrations here. I did wanna point out another resource uh, that we sometimes use, and that is purple air. That's been getting a lot of traffic lately. So when I compare uh, Air Now Tech, let me zoom in a little bit. So we're looking at the same area, and I'm gonna take off the smoke layer. So you can see that the number of monitors uh, in Air Now Tech is a lot lower than what we're seeing in Purple Air. Purple Air has a lot more monitors, and they report data on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. Um, however, the Purple Air monitors um, do have some issues with um, data accuracy. So I did want to point out, when we are looking at Purple Air, we use one of the conversions called LRAPA. And that is a conversion that came out of an, ana an analysis that was done comparing uh, Purple Air measurements to regulatory monitors um, so that they could do a bias correction on the data. So I found that with the LRAPA conversion, um, it matches pretty well with what's on air now with the regulatory monitors. And I think this is a really good resource. And um, the air now fire page actually combines those two data sources, but just wanted to uh, spend a little bit of time talking about purple air. Yeah, and it's important to note too with purple air. Um, no, they are not set up in the same way that regulatory monitors are and they are still the best when it comes to measuring air pollution across the country. Um, but certainly you can't argue with the sheer number of small sensor purple air monitors around. But I think the best thing to do if you're trying to interpret this at home is maybe take some of these values with a grain of salt, but just try to get a general sense of what the air quality is. And what we have found here in the last couple of weeks that generally the purple air monitors are syncing up fairly well with some of the regulatory monitors set up here across Northern California. Yeah, and it's worth noting just how clean the Tahoe area is right now. I think because of some... Um, easterly winds over that region recently uh, that blew the smoke back towards the Sacramento Valley. So it's been uh, very up and down in the Tahoe area. I know I've, I've had some friends who have asked, should we go up there? And I'm always cautious because things can change so rapidly with so many fires producing such dense smoke, it can go from good to very unhealthy in a matter of hours or even minutes. So I wanted to now look a little bit at the smoke forecast and the tool that we are gonna look at is the HER model. And I've loaded the loop here. Um, let me go back to the very beginning of this loop. This, this model uh, prediction was produced earlier today. And again, focusing on Northern California, the purple areas show the highest PM concentrations um, in this particular uh, image, those areas are very near the fires. And you can see as I move forward in the loop, you can see transport uh, from those fires. And you can actually see some accumulation in the Sacramento Valley. One thing I did want to point out was, if you recall, um, the satellite imagery was showing a dense plume offshore. And the HER model isn't really indicating surface PM concentrations that are very high due to that offshore plume. Um, it might be underrepresenting the total amount of offshore smoke, so uh, we'll just have to keep that in mind as we move forward. But what really stands out moving forward is sort of this injection of a cl slightly cleaner air mass through the delta here, through the Bay Area, then the Sacramento Delta into Sacramento County. And this is looking at later tonight into tomorrow morning, and that onshore wind pattern actually continues. Now you can see another buildup tomorrow afternoon, but then it eventually clears out again. So based on this model, it would suggest that the air quality would improve, should improve tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. And we might very well see that. However, going back to our original graphic here and just seeing the amount of offshore smoke, I think that there is gonna be transport of this offshore smoke 
uh, through the Bay Area and back into the Sacramento Valley. And I looked at some, uh, some back trajectories from the Sacramento area that indicate sort of the source region for tomorrow's air mass. And it did show transport from these fires up in Oregon, offshore, and then wrapping back in to the Sacramento region. So I think there is going to be additional smoke transport tomorrow. I don't think it's going to be good AQI levels anytime soon. And that wind pattern will actually uh, persist for several days, light onshore winds. So I do want to show what's going on with the weather models really quickly. So this is sort of the current, what we call the upper level weather situation. Right now, there's an upper level ridge over the west coast. There's actually an embedded uh, cutoff low um, at upper levels, sort of on the California-Oregon border. Um, but this ridge, which normally would reduce mixing in the atmosphere and trap smoke at lower levels, this ridge is actually going to weaken as I move forward. And this trough that's in the Eastern Pacific will actually approach Northern California. So the time that I'm looking at right now is, a, is Monday, Monday midday, moving into Tuesday. So this type of situation, we would expect um, onshore winds to strengthen. I think by that time, we're looking six days ahead, there will, be, there will have been a long enough period of onshore winds that hopefully it would have dispersed most of that offshore smoke and brought a cleaner air mass into our region. The last thing I wanted to show was looking at the surface weather situation. So right now, there's a very weak surface low pressure system offshore that's sort of driving these weak onshore winds through Sacramento. But if I jump way ahead into Monday and Tuesday, let's see, Monday afternoon into Tuesday, onshore winds should increase as that upper level trough approaches. And one other thing that I wanted to show was the potential for rain. Now we're looking at a very extended forecast right here. This is six days out. So the uncertainty is high, but there is a chance of rain, at least according to this model. This is the European model. And that rain might fall on the north coast of California. I don't think it's gonna bring a ton of relief in terms of the fires uh, and, and reducing uh, the amount of burning. Um, we also have to watch out for dry lightning events because that's what started this whole thing. So this is, this is the pattern that we're looking at in the extended forecast, the possibility of rain and increasing onshore winds. Glad so, you brought up the rain portion here, Patrick, as we're heading into uh, Monday and Tuesday. Uh, uh, you know, we've been digging into the computer model guidance and looking at ensemble models and looking at individual runs for the European model, the GFS model. Uh, while it is not a great chance of rain heading into Monday and Tuesday, and as Patrick mentioned, you know, six, seven days out, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty with that forecast at least the rain chance is not zero. And I think that for many Northern California residents, uh, yours truly, Patrick included, uh, any little chance of rain uh, certainly uh, is a welcome sight for very sore and parched eyes, no doubt. Yes, certainly. So we will be monitoring the smoke situation closely. Uh, we'll also be looking at the potential for more transport from offshore, but an eventual clean out as those uh, onshore winds persist for several days. Um, so I think that about does it for this update. Uh, we will produce another podcast as things evolve. Um, but for now, we are signing off from Sonoma Technology. Be sure to visit, visit us on Twitter at High Pressure Pod. I'm Patrick Zahn for Sonoma Technology. I'm Jeff Beamish, meteorologist with Sonoma Technology. And to see some of the great work we do at Sonoma Tech, you can head to our website, sonomatech.com. Thanks for watching.